Chief Constable of South Yorkshire said we shouldn't do the programme. It'll upset the families of the dead. I'm one of those families. My son died at Hillsborough. And I want the truth. Do you know what? I don't have to collect some rubbish. Don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. Don't want that. Yes! Grobbler throws it out to Hanson. Hanson rolls it to McMahon. McMahon, utterly dominant in midfield, takes his time. Passes to Beardsley. Quasimodo. Twists and turns, looking for Barnes. Barnes. First sign of madness, you know. <laughs> Vicky! Vicky! Yeah? Food? Can't make this parents night. I've got to go to Amsterdam. It's work. Steve McMahon, man of the match. It's true. It was brilliant. If you're going to be a sports reporter, Vicky, you've got to learn to be objective. I am objective. You're Steve McMahon mad, the pair of you. You're always in Amsterdam. Correction, Amsterdam Airport. I've never actually set foot in Amsterdam itself. Ask him for a lock of his hair, if it ever grows back. Yes. Steve McMahon <laughs> isn't bald. He's just got very fine hair. <laughs> From Anfield. Four tickets. <laughs> what school did you go to? Um, Archbishop Beck. And you work for Cox Softly? Oh, not on the vans. Delivery. And you haven't worked since then? No, I've tried, but... No, I... If we offered you this job, when did you start? Right away. Any hobbies? Apart from chasing bits of skirts, I mean. Football. One. Yeah. Well, what about Mike? You haven't got one. What sort of questions did they ask you? All sorts. I thought you said you want to get me a ticket. All right. Did they ask you why you wanted the job? Yeah. And what did you say? What? Oh, for God's sake, it's like trying to get blood out of a stone. <laughs> I just said that I, I needed the money. Dope. Hey, where's it for? Leppin's Lane. Needed the money. Yes. Why didn't you say you've always wanted to work there? Yeah. <laughs> it's only a bloody factory. Hey, you do ten years, you get to twist the knob. Ian. Me on. Come on. I can't stress too highly the word safety. The ground will be full to capacity today, and some of you may never have experienced a football match of this nature. Our job is to ensure the safety of spectators, and you must make sure 
you know the escape routes, the problem areas, and that you are fully conversant with your responsibilities should a crisis arise. Hey, shall I organise a sweep? First goal scorer. Hi. Who is this wanker? Duck and field. Used to be the super at West Bar. When did he arrive? Three weeks ago. Promoted. Three weeks ago. Let me just say this. Firm, but fair policing will be the correct attitude. Nobody gets in without a ticket. And nobody goes in who is drunk. What's she doing? What's she doing? She's changing again. Vicky! Come on! Oh, are you ready? <laughs> yes! Can we go? Yes! Thank you. It's a long drive out of us, you know. What do you think? Oh, for God's sake, Vicky, we're only going to a football match. What do you think? I think you might score. <laughs> See you later, Dad. If you get there early enough, you'll get a game yourself. See you later. Shouldn't I have the seat? Because you're supposed to be a gentleman. <laughs> Women's lips fine, isn't it? Till you get real equality. Till you get the hardships as well as the perks. <laughs> Some softies like you wouldn't understand. I don't want the seat. You don't get many feminists down a coal mine, for instance. <laughs> what? Oi. Less of it. Get your new costume, Pumpkin! Checked our tickets last year. Did they? Don't remember. They had barriers all down the road. You know, people who knock the police are the first to go running to them when there's trouble, OK? OK. Where was that? Down a coal mine. <laughs> Meet here after the game, right? Right. 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 <laughs> you won't bump into Jermaine Bloody Greer down a coal mine. He'd know, of course. You know what I'm going to buy you? What? Each of you. What? A broomstick. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> chef! <laughs> Sir. Sir. I'm going over to the director's lounge. Sir. I've got the seat in the director's box. Very good, sir. Obviously, you're in charge, Chief Superintendent, but I'm on call if you need me. Sir. I'd rather stand. I'll stand. You'll see more at them. <laughs> All right. Here. Tickets. That's super See you later. See you, Dad. Where are you going to be? Behind the goal. Where will you be? Oh, don't worry, I'm not going to cramp your style. Go on. Just let him in. The fans will find their own level. Yes, please, mate. Go 
traffic, please. Any sugars? No thanks. Seventy, please. Thank you. Hey, should we queue up? What more time is it? Quarter past ten. Hold up. I'm going to be standing around here for ages. Sorry. Come on. <laughs> so we're sitting there, right? <laughs> and he jumps up and he screams at the wireless. That was never the problem. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Rossi is the rebound, mate. <laughs> What's happening there? Oh, no. 25 past two. Loads of time. Loads of time. Lappin's Lane, North Stand, West Stand, Terraces, it doesn't matter, you're all going in Lappin's Lane. Hey, get where you go, you. Hey, what's wait? Oh, we're off to Susie Bobby, but do what you did last year, will you? Form a corner now, there, get them and take juice. Well, we're getting them all in on time. Yeah, we'll get them in all right. Start, Adam, you mess it. I don't fancy going in there. Me neither. As always, Hillsborough looks a picture, a beautiful pitch. One or two spaces, oddly enough, on the far side, though, John, because there's a problem of... No, to the right of there, that's it. Look down there. Unless that's some sort of segregation for what they call neutrals who've got their tickets from Sheffield Wednesday. That could be it, I suppose. Which means, really, I'm not going to talk about the capacity, because it might fall below it. I'm outside the ground! Sir? Mr. Duckenfield, sir, are you going to open the gate? If there's likely to be serious injury or death, I've no option but to open the gate. Shut the 
tunnel. It's packed. Okay, so they opened the big gate. But people still needn't have died. See, all they had to do was close off the tunnel like they normally did. And we would have all had to go round the side into pens with plenty of space. They didn't. And we all went down that tunnel into two pens that were already chocker. And no way out. What's going on? It looks like a pitch invasion, sir. This is ACC Jackson confirming the request for operational support. Secretary of the FA, what's going on? Fans forced the gate. Fans forced their way in. That's the result. Well, now, just before we go back to the snooker, I'm going to go uh, lead you to Gerald Sinistat at uh, Hillsborough, where Liverpool are playing in Nottingham Forest. Gerald, uh, what's exactly happening? It simply seems to be a problem, Bob, of too many spectators at the Liverpool end. They were coming over the safety barriers in the fifth or sixth minute of the game and began to spill onto the pitch. She's in! ...from here whether anybody is seriously hurt, but certainly a number of people have suffered in the crush. There are spectators being tended by St John's... She's in! ...officials in the penalty area. Got a shout. Oxygen and wire cutters. I don't think you're needed, mate. Take a look, eh? I think we can go up onto the gantry where John Watson, our match commentator, is. He 
That's amazing. You can use that phone. I'm not asking Maisie again. I'm scared. Look, I've used the one down the street, all right. It's reinforcements from the other end of the ground, the top end, and it's beginning to look like a serious problem. <laughs> since you were last with us we've now got more and more fans being carried away um, and in fact the police presence now on the pitch is enormous they're trying to just shepherd the, the people who have not been hurt away but that in itself is proving difficult because at the left-hand end where this tragedy occurred uh, the goal net has now been taken down <laughs> alive. Control to Sierra 507. Proceed red to Hillsborough Football what is Stadium. Football major incident involving Johannes football spectators. Repeat details, major incident. This is not an exercise. Proceed red. What is happening? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's happening at Hillsborough if you free Nelson Mandela now. Piss off! <laughs>
We're going to have to cut your jumper. You can't. We've got to. Your mum will kill me. I'm sorry. Tommy, you're going to have to go over to me, Mum and Dad. Because our Ian's dead. Uh, and there are firemen and first aid people and ambulance men mingling with the police, trying to sort out what has now become a terribly serious scene. There was one moment when the a section of Nottingham Forest fans did... It's Tommy. I'm sorry, Mr. Vicky's dead. to find Sarah. Mr Hicks, place it down. I've got to find my other daughter. Oh, God, what do I tell Jenny? Sarah Hicks, blonde, five foot seven and eight, 19 years old. There is one young woman who hasn't been identified. Christ's sake, that's Vicky. I know she's dead. I'm looking for a sister. I'm looking for Sarah. Unconfirmed reports, and I've got unconfirmed reports of five dead and many seriously injured there at Hillsborough. Sorry. Yes, sir. What do I do now? Excuse me, 
Excuse me, one sec, one sec. I'm going to be in the hospital. The Hallamshire, I'm going to be seeing my other daughter. If my wife comes here, it's crucial. Will you get you there? We'll get this done a lot quicker. It's crucial that you don't tell her about Vicky. Is that clear? You're not going to tell her. Just a minute, please. One sec. Don't tell her Vicky's dead until I get back, right? Yeah. Thank you. Now, you're next. Say your words. Good morning, sunshine. Charming. Where's your mum, son? Where's your dad? What about your mates? They're searching for you right now. Did you come with your dad? Is your dad looking all over the place for you? I got him going on the pitch. I got him going in the ambulance. I thought I'd cracked it. Then he went and died on me in the hospital. Where's your bloody jacket? Blonde hair, Levi's, white T-shirt, a leather jacket and DMs. I mean, they're probably back at the car, but I don't want to try that in case we miss each other again. Yep. Vicky's the youngest. Um, dark hair. Oh, Liverpool away T-shirt. Grandad cardigan and boots. Fifteen. Size fifteen. Aged fifteen. No. 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 Are you all right? I've lost my wife. Well, I'm sure you'll find her soon. She's dead. There are people dead. Very tall. I spoke to Tony Edwards, the ambulance man who took Victoria to hospital. He described rows and rows of dead bodies. He kept on saying, did anyone even try with them? Because there'd been no basic medical equipment around, no tubes for airways, nothing. They told me Sarah would come in the next ambulance. There wasn't a next ambulance. No other ambulance followed Tony Edwards onto that pitch. Outside the ground, an army of highly skilled people. Ambulance men, paramedics. Inside the ground, people like me. OK, they were doing their best, but... People died who might have been saved. His words, Tony Edwards' words, not mine. You want it open? Yes. Mrs Hicks? Yes. Please don't shut the door. Fine. You're Mrs Hicks? Yes. Mother of Victoria Hicks, aged 15? Yes. You're going to tell me that she's dead? My little Vicky? Shut the bloody door. She's only 15. She's only been to a football match. I'm so sorry. And you, you can piss off. You can shove your bloody God up your ass. You start talking to me about the love of God and I'll spit in your bloody eye. A 
fifteen year old girl, my Vicky. Get your bloody hands off me. My little I'm sorry to swear. You can swear all you like. A fifteen year old girl. And he thinks that he can come in here and spout to me about the love of God. If you've got people in this hospital, get them out. Jenny, please. Because they kill people here. They let people die here. Jenny, please. Young kids come in and they die in this place. Sorry, Jenny, please, my ass. She only went to a football match, for God's sake. She hasn't even died in her room. She's left things lying out. Things that I'm not supposed to see. <laughs> I want Trevor. He's on his way over from the Hallamshire Hospital. Yeah, with Sarah. He said he's got a young woman with him. Oh, thank God. How am I going to tell her? How am I going to tell Sarah that Vicky's dead? The gymnasium here at Hillsborough is being used as a mortuary for the dead. Of the thousands of Liverpool fans who travel joyfully to Yorkshire on a sun-filled April Saturday, at least 80 of them will not wake up Bring from the day. They were crushed to death as thousands of supporters spilled out onto the pitch behind one goal after just six minutes. That Bring out your dead. Reports say that the police are now engaging the boat. Within seconds, Listen, arms and legs were flailing in desperately box. in a sea of bodies. Don't put anything in Taken off the field, the match was abandoned 50 minutes later. And in the intervening period, don't put anything in your notebooks, all right? Medical field clearing don't put anything in your notebooks. Hundreds of police, medical Get it teams. all down in your notebooks. Who's that? Social worker. But they said that you were with Sarah. I can't find her. Vicky's dead. Oh, for God's sake, I said they weren't to tell you. They won't let me see her. Well, you can't. They've taken her back to the ground. I left Sarah on the pitch. I had to. There was no room in the ambulance, and I had to go with Vicky. Was she all right? I don't know, love. Oh, no. Oh, not both of them. Oh, please, I teach him over the slope. Bobby is a piss artist. He's a bit shorter than me. He's 30 and, and he's got no, fair no, no, hair. No, no, if you behave like this, sir, you're going to be in trouble. All we want to do is no check right for other girls to go in there. There's a chance that we could have lost yes, both you our daughters. Yes, but you have no rights whatsoever, sir. Can you, you see what that's doing This place has been designated. There's a temporary mortuary and everything in here belongs to the South. You don't know who you're talking to. I'm dressed like this, Nobody yes. goes no in here until the coroner says I'm a of the city of London. I know people. Look, sir, your daughter is no longer your property. People with clubs. I know senior officers. Nobody comes in. You want me to take a swing at you? I am just standing here. Why are you acting like this? Wait. We're looking for our children, for God's sake. You're simply saying that you will have to wait. You're simply saying nothing. Dead. There's more. Sarah isn't here. Look again, love.
Why is she still warm? Oh, Sarah. Did they have to make us look through them all? All those photographs? We were looking for a girl who could have separated males from females, adults from kids. Where have you come from today? Pina, middle six. <laughs> what time did you arrive at the ground? About okay. two. Did you have tickets? Three Leppings Lane, one in the stands. How much did you have to drink? Beg your pardon? How much did you have to drink? I fail to understand how that's relevant. Where would your son have stopped for a drink? My son didn't drink. You tell me he's a virgin next. Never mind, you put that on me! And did, um, Stephen... Did Stephen have a drink before the game? I hope so. Sorry? <laughs> I hope he was drunk out of his mind. I hope he never felt a thing. <laughs> Just have another drink before the game. Mr. Glover. Mr. Jones. Mr. Tootle. Can you get me a Catholic priest, please? Did he have a ticket? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much did he have to drink? I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, how much did he have to drink? Did you stop for a drink? <laughs> they told me... They told me that you were dead as well. What time did you get to make it.
have treated us like scum. It's guilt. Scores of people dead, thanks to them. Unbearable. So don't think of them as people. Think of them as scum. I'll just say this, and then I want you to leave. Football was the one thing we did as a family, and now we're not a family anymore. And please go. I can come to terms with what happened at Hillsborough, just about. But what happened next, in the days and weeks and months that followed, I'll never come to terms with that. I'll never come to terms with what happened next. I envy the people who found the kids early. They could hold the bodies, touch them. Well, the people who got dead a bit later, they weren't allowed to. They weren't their kids anymore. They were the property of the coroner. <laughs> and the ones who got there later still, well, they had to look at the bodies through glass. I must have got there last of all. They wouldn't let me out of the bloody hospital. Look at the bodies through glass. I must have got there last of all. He wouldn't let me out of the bloody hospital. I'm sick of this brave Liverpool fans rubbish. I'll tell the papers about these brave fans, shall I? They're pissed on the dead. They attacked my bobbies while they were trying to help the dying. Put that in the bloody newspapers. They went through the pockets of the dead and robbed them. Yeah? Did they break many nuns? Supporters of Everton, as well as Liverpool, gathered around the ground they to show my their men. respect. They pissed they on the dead. Poured into the ground, 
They went through the pockets of the dead and robbed them. There was pilfering going on. You're saying to me you left People bodies picking up unattended? Coins. Over a thousand coppers on duty and you left the dead unattended. You're saying to me you didn't close the area off? You're saying to me you watched people robbing from the dead and you didn't arrest one single person? And do you think he's going to buy that? Do you think the editor's a total bloody nutter? We regret that we feel unable to make any decision as to the future of the FA Cup competition so close to these events. Whether They're saying I killed my own brother. Seriously ill in hospital and funerals to be arranged. Away from Anfield, Lord Justice Taylor announced that his inquiry is to be led by a team from the West Midlands Police Force. They will be based in Liverpool. Don't pin it all on some bloody Irishman. As yet uncalculated. Elsewhere on Merseyside today, protests erupted against the Sun newspaper and their articles denouncing the Liverpool supporters as the primary cause of the disaster. Girls are home. Trevor! Yeah? The girls are home! Trevor! Trevor! Don't start me, please. Not today. We just want to be left to get on with it. We want to do it the way we planned, the way Adam would have wanted. I'm sorry. You can't. So you're telling me we can't drive past Adam's school? It's traffic problems. I'm sorry. Listen. You killed my son. You're not going to dictate how I bury him. I'm not South Yorkshire, Eddie. Don't tar us all with the same brush, please. That's what you did to us. Go through something. All right, so. What is it? Come in, Get in. He came this morning, fleeing. You got that job. Don't do him. Do not be afraid of them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed. What I tell you in darkness, speak it in the light, and what you hear whispered, preach it on the housetops. Blessed are the poor, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice, for they shall be satisfied. <laughs> Well done, son. 
Well done, sir. Well done, sir. Well done, son. Well done, son. In his report into the Hillsborough disaster, Lord Justice Taylor says that Liverpool fans were not to blame and that drunkenness was not a major factor. Instead, he concludes that the main reason for the disaster was the failure of police control. Yes! Lord Justice Taylor dismisses police claims that the disaster was caused by large numbers of ticketless fans arriving late. The judge says that the layout of the ground contributed to the build-up at Leppings Lane. There were 60 turnstiles for Nottingham Forest fans in the North Stand, the Cop End and the South Stand. But more than 24,000 Liverpool fans all had to enter through Leppings Lane. Lord Justice Taylor criticises the police for failing to filter the fans into queues. Once the fatal crush had built up, police ordered an exit gate to be opened to relieve the pressure. Catastrophe could have been avoided by closing off the tunnel and diverting the fans to empty side pens. Police failure to do this was a blunder of the first magnitude. Got him. Chief Superintendent David Duckenfield is singled out for criticism. He failed to take effective control and caused Jen. grave offence and distress by starting a widely reported and untruthful allegation that fans had smashed down a gate. During the disaster, he froze. Yes! I want two things. First, I want to make sure that Hillsborough never happens again. Yes. How do we make sure of that? We make them pay. Yes. We make them pay millions. Not that I want money. Money won't bring my son back. But money's the only language that these people understand. That's all he wants. The second thing I want is justice. That ground was a death trap. And the police just herded us into it like cattle. I want people to go to prison for this. I want justice. We all do, Eddie. But with this Taylor inquiry, we're nearly there. It's within our grasp. I want justice for my son. An inquest deals with the following matters. Who the deceased was, and how, when, and where the deceased came by his death. I will not yet be dealing with the question of how, because at the present time there is an ongoing inquiry by the Director of Public Prosecutions as to whether the incident at Hillsborough discloses any criminal proceedings. If you're going to die, get crushed to death at Hillsborough. No final way to go. Highly recommended. It didn't hurt a bit. Come on, Eddie, that's a bit much. Excuse me. Yes, John. This is this is going to be the cheapest disaster in history, from what I can say. My lad went to a game of football, and he brought him back home in a coffin. And you've offered me and Teresa funeral expenses. Now, was my lad's life worthless? Is that what they're telling me? It's not over yet, John. We've still got the DPP. Is right. You're paying other ways, John. Someone is going to go to prison for this. We want justice! The Director of Public Prosecutions, Alan Green, says there's not enough evidence to prosecute anybody. To bring manslaughter charges, he would have had to prove that somebody was grossly negligent. It's clear that he thought that nobody should be singled out for criminal charges. The families cannot accept that justice has been done, and we won't accept that justice has been done. We'll be accused of being vengeful and vindictive, I know, after today, but we will obviously now consider where we go next. I do know that when the inquest reopens, we will be looking for a manslaughter verdict. 
You're going to get away with it. That the judicial system will provide this for the families. Some of those injured or bereaved at Hillsborough may attempt to bring a private prosecution. Others will turn their attention to the inquest, which will be resumed in the autumn. Firstly, I'm proud to be the chairman of a group of people who've conducted themselves with dignity despite some unbelievable decisions against them. Uh, this one by the DPP is just the latest in a long line. So what now? Well, we'll continue to conduct ourselves with dignity. We'll continue to put our faith in British justice. No and open this door before I, I tear it off its bloody hinges. Jenny, Jenny, open the bloody door. You're not getting them. Open. You're not getting them. So just piss open. off, right? Bloody just piss off. Door. So open just piss off. Open the bloody door. door. You're not getting them. We've got to You're get not some sheets. kind of routine. I can still smell my daughters on these sheets. We've got sheets. to wash these sheets. We're not washing that away. Jenny, there was a time when I'd eat off your floor, but now I wouldn't trust your bloody table and that's got you're to You're never change. going to. Jenny, this is no, no good. You're never going to. This is no because good. I can't cope. I can't cope, Trevor. I can't cope because I love them. I love them. No, the two people in this, you couldn't have loved them. I love you've them. You've gone back to work. You've gone back to work. I love as them. As if nothing ever happened. Busy, busy, busy. That's chairman my way of coping. Of it's chairman my of the, way chairman of the coping. board. Chairman it's bloody my now. Way of coping. All the time in the world for other people. All the sympathy in the world for other people and not one bloody job left than me. Will you look at me? I can't look at you. World. Every time I look people, at you, you're blaming me. I can the see it there. You're blaming me. I have to leave it on the beach. I left it there. Look at me. And I me. did everything I could for Vicky. And it's me. not my fault our girls have died. It's not my fault. I'm not blaming you. I'm not blaming you. It's not my fault. Passing on, what but thy grace can foil the tempter's power? Oh, we want the DPP to change his mind and bring charges against the police at Hillsborough. So, will you sign our petition? Yes. You got a fortune. A fortune? Yeah. Every case we've brought, we've lost. So how'd you work that out? I'm talking about the disaster fund. All that money you got off the public. Yeah, I got some money and I whacked it out amongst my family. It was less than £6,000 each. I don't believe you. I've got the papers to prove it. Come on, lads. Have you got a son? You got millions. Have you got a son? Yeah. Well, I'll give you six grand for him. You got millions. Hey, and you'd be getting a bargain, by the way. Because if he's anything like you, he's nowhere to bleed in carrots! To them, he was one of 96 who died. Processed. Dispatched. The only difference being the cost. Adam didn't cost them much. I thought, well, OK, if that's how you're going to differentiate, if that's the only way you know of assessing my loss, money, then give me a hundred million pounds and I'll light a bonfire with it and then you can see just how precious that boy was. How unique. He could light up a room with his smile. Tim, Tim King. Trevor. Oh, yeah. How are you? I'm Tim. Hello. 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 John Glover. Tim King, the family's barrister. How do you do? How do you Look, do? Uh, anyone giving evidence for the fans is going to get a hard time. We've brought in the cavalry. There's ten of them. Richard Manning for Superintendent Murray. Christopher Russell for Superintendent Greenwood. Vincent Hale for Superintendent Marshall. Richard Payne for the Chief Constable of South Yorkshire. Paul Isaacs for Chief Superintendent Duckenfield. Remember, six months ago, we were dealing with individuals, weren't we? We were taking each individual person and listening to medical evidence. 
What we were trying to do then was to deal with the first three points that coroners deal with. Who died, when, and where. And now we're going to start thinking about how did they come by their deaths. As we discussed before, it means he won't take evidence about anything that happened after 3.15 on that day because the damage had been done by then. It's ridiculous. I mean, how could you say that? I say, fine, that's where I draw the line. What have been inquested if does not tell you what happened to your child? Does not make sense? Adam was alive at quarter past three. Adam was still alive. Teresa. He was alive way after 3.15. At 3.35 in the gymnasium, a doctor found a pulse. He was effectively dead. They all were. That was That's established crap. at the earlier I inquest. Was unconscious unconscious I'm still within alive. seconds, brain dead within minutes. Yeah, well, we never got a chance to challenge that evidence. It's extremely difficult to do it now. Can I say something? <gasps> John. Look, only 14 people out of all of them that died got to the hospital. Yeah. It was on bloody grandstand live. They didn't even they have to dial 999. Nine, nine. It was on grandstand. It was live on the television. But only 14 got to the hospital. Where were the paramedics? Where were the ambulance yeah. men? Why didn't they go on the pitch? Do you know there was policemen there and they were taking people's pulses and they still had their bloody gloves on? That was all after a quarter past three and that wants addressing. Yes, it yes. bloody does. Awesome. Jenny. You know where we went wrong? Listening to you. Dignity at all times. We'd have done better screaming our heads off. Here, here. Here, here. here. Eddie, look. This is our last chance. I know what you're saying, Jenny, and she's right. We've been shafted at every stage. I want a manslaughter verdict at the end of this inquest. Yes. There were coppers talking about a pitch invasion while people were dying. Yeah, right, Eddie. Now, that went on so well after 3.15, and I want this court to hear about it. So you, you go in there and tell that coroner he's not on. Yeah. Good on you, lad. I'll try. I'll try. I never wanted him in the first place. I wanted David Buckley. I didn't mean it. You did. I'd love to fall in heap and sob and show the world I'm suffering. For God's sake, if you're talking grief, I'm up there with the best of them. Two girls, not one. Double what most of them are going through. Don't do that. I'd love a good self-indulgent wallow in it all. A good rant, a good wallow, that'd be a lot easier. A lot easier than Mr. Cool, calm, rational. I was talking to a few of the Liverpool team, thanking them. There was one player, he'd been to one funeral, just one. He said he would have gone to more, only he couldn't take it, he was too sensitive. I felt like saying to him, does that mean the others are less sensitive than you, because they've been to loads of funerals? I don't think so. I'm going back in. Right. I have listened, hopefully with attention. <clears throat> I'm going to take these inquests and deal with the question of how, on the basis of what happened up to 3.15 or thereabouts. I base it mainly on the medical evidence from several pathologists. On average, how many pints would you say people were knocking back? They were coming up for lager, five pints at a time. Individuals were? Yeah, plus your Guinness or whatever. What? Would you say that some of the people had had... Quite enough, sir. 
um, 15, 20 pints per person. 15, 20 pints? Look at all these little lads, for God's sake. A complete stink of alcohol. People were drinking from cans, not just cans of beer, but those enormous plastic bottles, two litres of beer. Why are they saying so many people arrive so late and in possession of drink? The abusive comments, the facial expressions, the overall demeanour of the crowd was quite evil. This particular crowd had a significant number of A, people who had been drinking heavily, and B, people who had no ticket and could therefore only gain access by creating such a crush that the police would have to open the gates. Is he going to allow this? This is all lying flies. Why don't you read the bloody Taylor report, for God's sake? At the cup final that very year... You can stay if you want to, Trevor. We can't go for a street victory in the league until we have a cup final months after. Stormed the gates of Wembley. This is not fair. It shouldn't be allowed. Stay here. It is claimed that these two were lively and good humour. You were saying Liverpool fans killed Adam. That's playing into the hands. Don't play into the I house. also refer... For if God's people sake. leave the court, I want them to leave quietly. Do you think I protect people who killed my son? I also refer... They didn't. They didn't. I also refer to the Trafalgar Square riots. That was a West Midlands officer presenting evidence for the superintendent on duty outside Leppins Lane. They were rewriting history. I mean, the evidence was a bloody disgrace. We wanted the inquest stopped there and then, but the coroner said, oh, no, no, no need. I'll tell the jury to disregard it. Blatant prejudice. How could he expect them to disregard it? But it fed the myth, didn't it? A gang of drunken yobbos stormed through the gate and crushed the people at the front. That was the myth. Here's the truth. A quarter of all the people who died went through that gate. Eddie Spirit and his little lad went through that gate. A quarter of all the people who died were sent through that gate by South Yorkshire Police. I want to move to Liverpool. Jenny, we can't. Snowed under in work. I, I want to move there, live there. Be close to the girls. Visit their graves whenever I want to. I want to be close by my girls. You make sure you say what you want to say. Oh, well. You're not going. You want a vest? Look, you're not up to it. I'm coming. Oh, Don't forget, Joe. We're going to try and lead you now. I know. Fairly near the front, were you? Yeah, fairly near the front, yeah. And then... Um, we sort of, like... I, th I think there was, like, a surge. And... We sort of just got pushed, pushed over a bit. And then it, it just started getting tighter, where you, where you couldn't move. You were getting crushed against people where you couldn't move. You couldn't move at all. And then Ian... You could see as though Ian was choking. It was just before leaving the pen. I was right by him. And there was... There was a lad in front of us who vomited. There was a lad in front of us who vomited on, on his jumper. 
And there was another lad who fell into the floor. Yes. Have a little drink of water. Could I have a break for a minute, please? Sorry? Could I have a break for a minute, please? Sorry, I couldn't, uh... Yes, by all means. Just leave us for a few minutes and settle yourself down. Say, go on. I'm letting him down. Again. There was a police officer just slightly to the right of me, about five or six feet away. And I started begging him to open the gates onto the pitch. I was screaming. My lovely son is dying. I'm begging him to help. But he didn't do anything. He just stood there looking at me. I realised he wasn't going to do anything. So I grabbed hold of Adam. I tried to lift him above the fence. But the fence is about ten feet high with these spikes coming in. See, I couldn't lift him. No one opened the gate. Right at the beginning, when I was begging the officer for help. If he would have just opened it then, I know I could have got Adam out. I know that. Because I was there. Adam fainted at about five to three. And yet he was in that pen for 25 minutes before anyone got him out. That may well be so, but we are not exploring that aspect of the matter at the moment. You want Sarah's or Vicky's? Oh, you choose. I have the football programs. Yes. Can I have the trivial pursuit? Mickey's match repulse. For God's sake, Trevor. What? You're only choosing that because you saw me looking at it. I'm not. You're doing it out of spite. I'm not. You are. I'm not. You are. Right, I'm toss for it. Right.
You call. Heads. Look at us. See you then. Can I take the opportunity of wishing all the legal representatives a very, very happy Christmas? And I will use the term prosperous new year. It's appropriate for legal representatives, <laughs> but I don't want to exclude anybody else. I know particularly for the families, this is a very difficult time. But nevertheless, I want to wish you as happy a Christmas and as happy a new year as you can possibly have. Collections are that that particular camera had been faulty. As you saw a little on the videotape, that camera was not really used very much because of the substandard picture. Would it have been recording before 1502? Yes. So there ought to be a film of it? I would have thought so, yes. If I were to tell you that we can't find it, would that make any difference to your answer? I've no idea at all where it could have gone to. It was part of the tape and the tapes were all sealed up at the end of the day. That camera recorded the state of the pens just before the police allowed another 2,000 people into them. Recorded exactly what the police could see. But that evidence disappeared. Never mind, he said. That camera was faulty anyway. Do you maintain the view that it is not possible to zoom in and clearly identify a given individual? I'm quite happy with that comment, yes. You maintain that? Yes. I assume you're equally confident about your assertions as to what you can and cannot see on the terraces generally, about uh, not being able to pick out overcrowding and so forth? Yes. But you can zoom in and clearly see facial features, can't you? I don't think so, sir. That's bloody marvellous, that is. Did they have this on the day? Yeah. I installed it all. They had a camera like this and they're trying to say they didn't know the central pens were full. You could even see the time on that guy's watch. It's that good. I can see what's on the end of his finger. Exactly. A man who could contradict vital police evidence. And he was never called. He told me he was in the Sheffield Wednesday control room and he could see what the police could see. And he knew the pens were chocker. I mean, Stevie bloody wonder would I know. Your suspended chief, Superintendent Dockenfield. You shouldn't be in uniform! 
Yes, I was in the control box. And I was standing towards the back of that control box. And I had a view. As you rightly say, you have the other facilities. But I did not see anything untoward on those terraces from my position, from my viewing position, and from the angle at which I was in the control box. You told us you didn't know of the precise contents of the safety certificate. It is difficult to recollect after such a long period. Had you been supplied with a copy? I can't recollect, sir. Did you call for one? I recall asking about it, sir. You say your knowledge of the ground was limited? Yes, sir. Well, based on how many journeys round the ground prior to the 15th of April? I can't answer with any accuracy. Well, how many roughly? I would be guessing, sir. Did you know there was to be no stewarding by the club as regards the Leppings Lane terraces? I don't think I remember that. Well, can you seriously say that you felt yourself competent to be in overall command of the Hillsborough ground? This is definitely an incriminating question, and you should think hard before you answer. I was something of a generalist, as opposed to a specialist. Tulips are coming through again. I've cracked it this time. Fill a load of plastic bottles with petrol. Make myself a bazooka. It's easy. It's just a piece of tube and compressed air. I cycle down the side of Hillsborough. The admin block, right? There's windows. Wallop. One window after another, right down the side. But the petrol bombs aren't lit. You go through each window, smash. Nice build-up of vapour. You get to the last window. And that's the bottle you like. Wallop, smash, boom. Plastic bottles won't smash. They split. There are three possible conclusions which you are able to consider. The first is unlawfully killed. The second is accidental death, misadventure. The third one is open. The first one, unlawfully killed, you have to be satisfied beyond reasonable doubt. The second? I'll get someone to take you home. I'll phone as soon as we get a verdict. I'm okay. Jan, I don't want this baby born in Sheffield. What? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you likely to reach a verdict within the next hour or so? No. In that case, carry on until, say, 4.30 and then we'll convey you to a suitable location where I hope you'll have a reasonable evening. I want to ask you again a question I asked you yesterday afternoon. Are you likely to come to a verdict within, say, the next hour or so? No. Tomorrow, then? Shall we say, then, 9.30 tomorrow? Wake on the witness. Yeah, please. You all right waiting? Yeah, really. sure? I didn't join to knock the hell out the miners or anybody else. All right, Maggie's with tackles, yeah. But I joined to stop thieving and mugging and drug dealing. That's why I joined. Should you manage to give it all up, son? <laughs> yeah?
Mr. Foreman, would you please stand? Have you reached a verdict on which you have all agreed? No. Have you reached a verdict on which at least nine of you has agreed? Yes. Do you know what it is, or do you want to go out and fetch the forms? We haven't got the forms, the actual verdict. Okay. Tell me what wording you've decided to put into paragraph three. Nine two majority. Accidental death. <laughs> accidental death? What are they talking about? Oh, no. How can it be accidental death? There's a meeting of all families right now. We've got a room set aside down the corridor. How can you think to me? Anybody saying anything now? We've tied it your way, Trevor! No. I swear to God, no. John! Get out the way, Trevor! Can you tell me what you decided to put in the paragraph three? How can you call us justice? How can you be convenient like that? Bloody hell, natives! 95 kids have died! How can you be convenient like that? Would you like your kids to die like that? They've took our kids and these have now took our dignity! It's a farce, this is! The longest inquest in history! No, it's not! I think the jury had better withdraw so they can formulate that part of their verdict correctly. Go on! Rats! Leave in the sinking Yes! Go on! Go on! I hope you can sleep in your bed tonight because we won't! We'll never sleep that me again! You will have me bits and kids! Go on, some football match! I have sat at home for months hearing people say I killed my own brother. And the only thing that kept me going was this, this bloody verdict. I've had to defend my own brother. He died, but I have still had to defend him. And all he did was go to a bloody football match. Will you come along to his grave and you tell him it was an accident? I and it was my own clean brother. Take me home, Medi. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. Sing with us. I don't feel like singing. I don't feel like singing. The jury have found in respect of the 95 names, which I will now read out, that the time, place, and circumstances at or in which the injury was sustained in respect of each one of these 95 was that he or she died on 15th April 1989 as a result of crush injuries sustained at Hillsborough football ground, Sheffield. And the conclusion which they have come to was accidental death. The first person I will mention is Colin Wafer. The second person is Stephen Francis O'Neill. The third is Ian Thomas Glover, Sarah Louise Hicks, Victoria J. Hicks, Andrew Mark Brooks, Adam Edward Spirit.